By 2008, Rey Mysterio had accomplished everything there is to accomplish on SmackDown, not to mention he faced everybody on the brand. So it was time for a change of scenery. He rebuilt his name here and turned into one of the most recognizable wrestlers out there. Mysterio's influence is absolutely insane. This man had people thinking that any random masked man is him because he made that mask synonymous with his name. To any outsider, wrestling is synonymous with WWE and in Rey's case, he has the mask. 2008, WWE draft was a very important one in the history of drafts because WWE was set out to freshen things up. Usually in drafts, one or two big names leave their brand but here you had Triple H going to Smackdown, Batista going to Raw, even JR and Michael Cole switched places. I don't think there was a stronger draft out there barring 2005 because everything changed. Rey Mysterio happened to be one of the names drafted to Raw and looking back this was so strange. At the end of the day Raw is a WWE show but this was back when things were still somewhat separate and different between the two shows although that was changing. On the June 30th 2008 episode of Raw the Master of the 619 came out to give his first promo on Monday nights. He congratulated CM Punk for becoming champion. He said that his entire WWE career, his entire life was Smackdown and being drafted to Terrell was shocking, but he didn't have a problem because it's exciting. All of a sudden, Santino interrupts, and if you know about this segment, then you know what's up. He was here to welcome Ray, but didn't see the big deal in him because he hides behind a mask. Maybe he's stupid or he's even Batman. Ray's about to talk, and he's like, shut up, your face. He's like, shut your face off or something along the lines of that. Santino showed a big problem with Ray being on the magazine cover and mocked him, saying, I'm Ray Mastro, I'm taller than Hornswoggle, yet they rejected his image. They wouldn't accept that even on opposite day. He finally allowed him to speak but said that he should talk in a language that everyone can understand. It was WWE language. He dropped him with a 619 and Rey Mysterio has a good first impression on Monday nights. He made easy work of Santino Morello the following week before disappearing. Rey had yet to fully recover from his bicep tear in February. It was a way of reminding people that he's still around and has nowhere to go. At the same time, Kane was in a strange heel turn. He was teasing the return of his mask the last couple of weeks and it seemed imminent that a return to the mask was near. Mike Adamley said that this has to come to an end and he didn't want kids mimicking Kane and holding a random bag at school. Kane goes out there, has the match with Chris Jericho, but during the match a bunch of security come in and Kane's forced to give in to Adam Lee's demands. Kane had a strong grip in possessing the mask and Adam Lee said that talking about this person who's alive or dead recently is Kane. That's who he's referring to, his old self. The Raw GM tried to assure him that he can lead a normal life and asked for the bag. When it came down to it, he acknowledged that there was a mask in the bag but the man who wore it was scarred and tortured beyond human recognition, and it wasn't his mask, it was Rey Mysterio's. Kane finally came clean and said that Rey hides behind his mask, he contaminates everything. Kane was proud of decimating Rey and asked the question, is he alive or is he dead? Big brother Batista had a huge problem with this and a brawl between the two ensues. Kane though had much more fight in him here and managed to overcome the animal. Kane basically saw Rey as a poison to society. He went into detail about this the following week. Kane said that what Batista did to John Cena is nothing compared to what he did to Rey. His enjoyment of brutalizing Rey quickly came to an end because Mike Adamley announced Rey Mysterio was a participant for the championship scramble at Unforgiven. Kane shouting that he's dead, his soul is gone and told the GM to keep hoping, but that turned out to be true because Rey Mysterio made his return the following week in a very foul mood. This boiling rage overpowered Kane who had to make space and even then that didn't work and Rey was on top. Both men failed to capture the world title but Rey was fully focused. He refused to allow what Kane did to him again and said that he's gonna stand strong if he's gonna be on Raw. He said that Kane's claims of killing his spear is a lie. Shortly afterwards, the match was made. Kane admitted that he was forced to take his mask off, but it was a decision he made to be accepted by the fans. That got him nothing. He hates being ridiculed. The fans are repulsed, but that feeling is the same he shares for them. Ray wears a mask and people love him. Why? Because they hide behind a mask of self-righteousness and deep down, they care about nobody but themselves. The attack on Ray was an attack on the fans. This man Evan Bourne came in like a little kid and told him that he can't wait when Ray beats him. <laughs> Kane's intentions towards unmasking Ray overcame his goal of winning the match and Evan Bourne of all people had to make the save. Kane demanded a rematch and it was granted for no mercy. Before the event he once again made his mark on Ray Mysterio and said that he was a coward that hides behind his mask. The match in no mercy came with a stipulation. Ray lost. He had to unmask, and Kane was preying on his downfall. The match saw Kane easily dominate early on. Ray had no answer to the slow onslaught with his high-flying offense, failing to put a dent in Kane's armor. Mr. 619's biggest problem was adjusting to the pace. He was unable to neutralize Kane enough to get rolling, because even when he hit this reverse DDT, Kane was back up. Finding form wasn't a problem here, but Kane blasted him with a steel chair to give Ray Mysterio the DQ win. Decent match, but it was used as a backdrop for the program to intensify. I almost think that this feud was already too intense at this point, as it could have been no DQ, but that was yet to come. Ray and Kane interacted over the next couple of weeks in tag team action. The Big Red Machine was getting the best of Mysterio in both matches and had a strong grip on the feud. Ray did hold his own after their second match though and showed more fight than Kane expected. As for Cyber Sunday, look at these choices. Water, water, or water. But that's easily overlooked because this match was very good. These two worked well on their dynamics together and Cyber Sunday showed their true potential was unlocked. Kane was a sadistic individual who craved nothing more than pain and despair for Ray, who was always dragging himself from the jaws of hell and he would put in the work but Kane quickly undoes it. So it required him to become even smarter about his approaches. It worked out well for Rey Mysterio who overcame the monster and emerged victorious.
good match. Why did I like it though? It felt like Ray had to dig even deeper and wrestle a lot more smarter than usual. The dynamics work very well and in a no DQ situation and brought out the best in Kane. Ray still had his issues with Kane but he put them aside for a match against Evan Bourne. Back then on Raw you weren't seeing this type of action often so this match really stood out. Evan was a very hot commodity at the time. Nobody wrestled like him in WWE and the only guy who was so uniquely out there at the time was Kofi Kingston. These two put on a show for the time given and certainly got the crowd hot. Ray won this battle but Kane ran in right afterwards to attack. Bourne tries to make the save but Mark Henry of all people comes in and drops him with the world's strongest slam. This was supposed to lead to a tag team match on the 800th episode of Raw but Bourne got injured so Kofi was the replacement. That didn't go Ray's way but he was going to have one last chance to finally put an end to this ongoing turmoil with the big red machine. No disqualification in Manchester. This match basically showed how much Ray had evolved during the feud to become more consistent in his attacks. He beat Kane decisively once again showing that he had become even more intelligent in his efforts to combat Kane. And this didn't hit as hard as their Cyber Sunday match but the feud was finally over. Personally I think they booked this one strange. From one Kane claims he took Ray's soul away and the way he's talking it sounded weird. He got attacked in the parking lot but there's no footage around it for somebody that got his soul taken away and was victimized. Ray was calmer as the feud was going by. It was strange but match wise it wasn't bad at all. Ray's enjoying life. All's good but this isn't the norm because Ray Mysterio usually has problems and Mike Knox now had an issue with it. He attacked Ray before his Intercontinental Championship tournament match which forced Ray to wrestle at a disadvantage later that night. Miz put in work to damage that arm more and Ray had to steal the victory from the Miz to face Kofi Kingston in the semifinals. The tag team champion put up a fight but Mr. 619 was hungrier. This set up a clash with the second city Saint CM Punk at Armageddon. I'm sure many of you heard good things about this match. CM Punk was in rebuild mode after losing the world title and was trying to find himself again. Ray on the other hand was doing business as usual. These two had an almost untapped potential. Punk worked as the designated heel forcing Ray to work from under and slowly dissect his midsection. CM Punk wrestled very similarly in their 2010 feud. The situation asks for it because Ray's an underdog. He placed a heavy emphasis on holds whereas Ray was more reliant on soaring the heavens. He dabbled in the submission area but stuck to what worked best. They showed great resiliency and timing but Punk took advantage of one slight moment to hit a brutal GTS. This GTS looked mean because Ray's tiny, he flew high, and it looked great. William Regal looked impressed and poor Ray had a broken nose, so that's why it looked good. Because it was real. This was the best match in Ray's run up to this point. I liked it so much because there was great chemistry. These guys didn't really face off before, so seeing them do this in their very first match, at least on television, is cool. They matched well, and it would only get better. Mike Knox made sure that Ray didn't forget about him and dished out a vicious beating. And to make matters worse, the night Mike Knox was away, he ends up losing his title opportunity because HBK decided to slap JBL. It was a two birds, one stone situation because Michaels was an employee of Ratchas, so Mysterio addressed this. Now Ray's a good guy, he couldn't really show much anger, but he called them out. Ray didn't want to spot in the number one contenders match, but instead he wanted a one-on-one -on -one match with a heartbreak kid. JBL put a stop to this despite HBK accepting, but this didn't really lead to much for Ray Mysterio. Mr. 619 though got to face Mike Knox Knox in a 10-man tag team match later that night. Ray scored the victory over Knox and looked forward, but even then Mike Knox continued to stalk him. Two times he destroyed him after his matches and when asked why he attacks, he didn't know why. There's not much of a reason. They had the match and it was very one-sided with Knox continuously beating Ray Mysterio into oblivion. In the meantime, he qualified for the Elimination Chamber match, as did Knox. But they didn't really interact much. The real story though was Ray's performance. He played a part in John Cena's elimination and almost won the World Heavyweight Championship, but Edge's sneaky tactics got the best of him. He finally got the rematch with Mike Knox and managed to steal one away. And that was the feud, and it was very low effort. Mike Knox didn't have much of a reason to attack Ray Mysterio, not to mention Ray barely addressing these attacks. It was a throwaway feud and lacked a lot, but Ray was on his way to WrestleMania. He missed the last two due to injury, but this time around he was on the show, and he was set to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship against an old friend, JBL. They did interact, but not to the level you'd expect for a feud between these two. For some strange reason, they booked Ray and JBL for the final Raw before WrestleMania, and Ray beat him clean within two minutes. JBL was dumbfounded and absolutely stunned. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. He had promised something Something big for WrestleMania and came out talking about how he's a hero of Texas. Rey Mysterio was dressed as Heath Ledger's Joker, which was pretty cool, and the events of what had followed were no doubt about it shocking. Cheap shots from JBL before the match begins, but right when the bell rings, Rey connects with the end security and hits the 619 and the splash. One, two, three, new champion. 21 seconds is all it took for Rey, and this drove JBL to the breaking point because he quit. And right afterwards, it's like he showed remorse, but yeah, Rey forced him into retirement twice. Found this, Rey was drafted to SmackDown with the Intercontinental Championship, so his Raw run came to a close. All right, that, that was a weird one. I personally feel like with Rey Mysterio's star status, they could have pushed him a little higher up. There could have been a feud with Chris Jericho, which they eventually did on SmackDown. I just feel like he was in an odd position because I personally believe maybe it's because he was injured a lot. They decided, you know, let's just do this Kane and Mike Knox thing. We don't want to work him too much because he just came off a bicep tear. But his time on Raw could have been more. Right when he goes to SmackDown the first three months, everything is better. Now, when you look at his time from SmackDown in 2009 to 10, amazing. 
he was always up there he was always doing something something big he would talk a lot he'd do stuff here not so much but yeah Ray's, here, Ray's run here was strange. It was bizarre. All right, what do you guys think of Ray Mysterio's Raw Run? Please comment down below on that to first video. Make sure you hit the hurricane on the like button, perhaps the 619 on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.